Hi, here we are with the argument of definition essay. Now the argument of definition is to be a minimum of 1,000 words in which you present and support an argument of definition as defined, how you like that, in Everything's an Argument, Chapter 9. Your essay must cite a minimum of four outside sources, three of which originate in print or have print analogs. Remember what I said about that. That means it's a book, a magazine article, a newspaper article, an academic journal piece, a government report, something of that nature. That's in addition to whatever else you want to find, of course. These sources must be presented in correct MLA fashion with both parenthetical in-text documentation and a works cited page. Dictionaries, encyclopedias, and other general reference works do not count as sources. Now keep in mind, of course, that many of you, if not all of you, will likely use a dictionary in this assignment. It's, it's usually, to be honest, a good starting point. But I don't want to consider that one of your research sources, okay? I mean, we need to go beyond and do better than that. In addition, you must have at least two notes done in MLA format. Now, to go and see how this works, go to the MLA Style Center, which you can locate on our Canvas module under Web Links, MLA Style Center. And that first screen, if you scroll down a little bit, there is a spot that says Endnotes and Footnotes, and that's where you want to click and see how they're done properly. Okay. The topic will be a topic of your own choosing, but just as a reminder, there are a few topics that are off limits. Abortion, death penalty, child abuse, and religion. Okay, this is always my forbidden list. It doesn't change. Certainly, there are many other topics to choose from. Oh my gosh. You must also provide a word count of your essay at the end of your text. Do not include the name block, works cited, table or figure or anything like that in your word count. Now I will be creating new work groups to which you will submit a completed rough draft on Wednesday, July 9th, 11.59 p.m. for peer editing. This draft should be as full and complete as possible, meeting all minimum standards required for the assignment. Rough drafts will be submitted both to your workshop group and to me. Okay, some of you were a little rough on that and you lost points. Make sure that you submit properly to the workshop group that you're in. Put it in the files section. Okay. The peer editing will need to be completed by Friday, July 12th, 11.59 p.m. To get, again, two days to do the peer editing. Peer edits will be submitted both to the original author and to me. Okay, same story again. You send the peer edits back to the files. Okay, the same place where you put your rough draft is the same place where you put the peer edits. Remember, the more work you put into the draft, the better your final draft will be. So if you kind of really didn't do much for a go around, hmm, you know, you're not going to get a lot of help. If you put in a lot of work, then there's a possibility for a lot of improvement. Based on previous experience, I can tell you that the difference in the grades of essays that have been peer edited and those that have not is striking. Be sure to consult the out-of-class essay guidelines and the MLA handouts so that you avoid errors in format and style. After the peer edits are submitted, you will need to revise and polish your essay and turn in the rough draft on Monday, July 15th 11.59 p.m. Okay. No late essays will be accepted without a verified medical or legal excuse. So, again, you know, be on time. Just a quick going over here. The minimum requirements, at least 1,000 words. This is only your composition. Remember, it doesn't include any extra materials that get tossed in there. Four sources. Now, you can always have more, right? Four sources, all cited in the paper. Three of these sources originate in print or a print analog. You may have more than the minimum. There needs to be at least two notes, and you do them as either footnotes or endnotes. And again, please spend the time checking that out online. It's kind of what we have to do in an online class. I have to ask you on your own to do this work. Uh, but clearly it will show in the bottom line those who do and those who don't. 
and of course MLA documentation for both in text and works on page. One factor that you may or may not have noticed, I have not made any requirements for scholarly work on this assignment, which is not to say they're prohibited, because that's certainly not the case, but it's not specifically required. Okay. So you don't have to have an academic journal or university press book or PhD dissertation. Now, if you use it, great, wonderful. That's, that's terrific, but it's not required. Okay. So I hope this helps. I hope this helps you. Uh, if you have any further questions, please, again, as always, do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you.